Okay, so new definition. Let phi be a function between the sets A and B. If the domain of the function is the entire first set A, then the function phi is called a function from the set A into the set B, and this is denoted phi for which A is mapped into B. In this case, The set B is called the codomain of the function. So let's revisit our map diagram for a function between the sets A and B. And previously, we had two elements in the set A being mapped onto a common element in the second set, but each element is mapped to exactly one, each element in the set A is mapped to exactly one element in the set B, and so this is a function between the sets A and B. In order for this to be a function from the set A into the set B, each of the elements in the set A must be mapped to only one element in the second set B. And so if we now map the element A sub 3 into the element B sub 2, we now have a function from the set A into the set B, and we can denote this function as phi and show the map from the set A into the set B. So let phi be a function from the set A into the set B. If the ordered pair AB is in this function, this is denoted using functional notation as f of A is equal to B. We can also write that the element A is mapped into the element B. Now notice that the range of the function phi is a subset of the codomain B. Okay, so now we need to begin to consider uh, certain types of sets, in particular sets of numbers, and so the first set that we will define is the set of natural numbers. The natural numbers is the set of those numbers which we used or we use to count objects. The symbol for the set of natural numbers is an ornate or blackboard bold letter N, and it contains the numerals 1 or the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on. That is, once again, numbers that we use to count. Now, the set of natural numbers is the uh, most studied set in the history of mathematics. 
and for historical reasons, the set does not include the number zero. The natural numbers uh, came into being when people started uh, counting objects. The uh, concept of the number zero came much later in the history of mathematics, and uh, at first, the number zero was not used in computation, rather it was a symbol uh, as a placeholder uh, to indicate the value of uh, certain numbers. For instance, today uh, we use a positional number system where we can make the distinction between a single object and ten of those objects simply by using a symbol which denotes a place value. So uh, again, the, the natural numbers does not include the number zero. It includes those numbers that we use to count objects that exist. We always begin counting with one. Uh, much later, the concept of zero as uh, consisting of nothing and as a, uh, a number which uh, does not change the value of a sum uh, came much later. So the next set of numbers that we will define are the integers. The integers consist of the number zero. Together with the positive and negative natural numbers. The symbol for the set of integers is an ornate or blackboard bold letter Z. And again, this is the set of all positive and negative natural numbers together with zero. And so we begin from negative infinity and so on. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and so on to positive infinity in increments of one. Now the symbol for the uh, Integers comes from the German word Zoll, which means numbers or number, singular, or Zollen, which is the plural, numbers. Now, uh, I want to point out uh, that positive and negative have distinct uh, definitions. In fact, let's just give the definition. A number n is positive if and only if that number is strictly greater than zero and is negative if and only if that number is strictly less than zero. So notice the number zero is neither positive nor negative since the number zero is not strictly greater than zero and the number zero is not strictly less than itself. So the concept of positive and negative uh, can be associated with uh, a position relative to the number zero on a number line. Everything to the right, which we say is strictly greater than zero, is positive. And everything to the left, which we say is strictly less than zero, is negative. And another thing to note about the number zero is that the, as it is neither positive or negative, the negative of zero is simply 
0. Now, it will be convenient for us to consider uh, subsets of the integers. One common subset is what we call the set of positive integers. And this is the set of all integers such that that integer is strictly greater than 0. Notice that this is the set beginning with 1 and continuing on indefinitely. And so this is identical to the set of natural numbers. We also considered the set of negative integers. And this is the set of all integers such that that integer is strictly less than 0. Other common notations uh, for subsets include what we call the set of non-negative integers, and usually we use a superscript greater than or equal to 0. And this is the set of all those integers that are greater than or equal to 0. And again, we call this the set of non-negative integers. We also consider the set of non-positive integers. And we use a superscript less than or equal to 0. And this, of course, is the set of all integers that are less than or equal to 0. And once again, we call this the set of non-positive integers. OK, so next we begin to consider operations. Roughly speaking, An operation is something we do to one or more elements of a set to produce another element. which is not necessarily in the same set so a function or rather a uh, an operation is a function from one set into another and common examples include uh, the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division an operation is closed over a given set if it produces an element in the same set. Equivalently, we say that the operation, a correction that the set is closed under the operation. So next we'll begin to look at uh, special types of operations that are uh, closed over a given set. A function phi from the set A into the set A, that is a function mapping the set A back into itself it is called 
a unary operation. on the set A. So notice that the unary operation has the property of closure. That is, it is something that we do to elements in the set A that produces once again an element in the set A. So let's look at some examples. Let the function phi be a map from the set of integers back into the set of integers and let this uh, function be defined by phi of a is the negative of a. Now for any integer, in the uh, if we take its negative, we once again have an integer. And so this is a function that maps uh, the set back into itself. And so this function phi is a uh, correction, a unary operation. on the set of integers. So next, let's look at an example of an operation that is not a unary operation on a given set. Let phi be the uh, map from the set of positive integers into the set of negative integers, and let this function be defined by phi of a is the negative of a. So for each element in the set of positive integers, when we take the negative of that element, we obtain an element that is in the set of negative integers. So this function phi is an operation. It is something that we do to an element in one set, producing an element that happens to be in another set, but this operation this function is not a unary operation on the set of positive integers since it produces elements in the set of negative integers which is not a subset of the set of positive integers. That is, its, dom uh, its range is not uh, the set of positive integers, and therefore it is not being mapped back into the set of positive integers. So next we define a new type of operation, a binary operation. on a given set A is a function which we'll call phi mapping the Cartesian product of the set A with itself into the set A that is a function mapping ordered pairs of elements in the set A or from the set A into the set A. So notice that a binary operation also has the property of closure. In this case we are taking two elements from the set A and combining them in such a way as to create a third element which is once again in the set A. Now uh, the Cartesian product of a set with itself is usually denoted with a superscript notation and so for example the uh, Cartesian product of the set A with itself can be denoted A squared. 